So what do we mean by a living systematic review? So uh, the definition that we have at the moment, which is adapted from the one that um, Julian Atari first published, is that it is a systematic review, that it's continually updated, incorporating new evidence as it becomes available. So just to point out a few of the key, um, key items or elements of that definition, is that we're still talking about a systematic review. So retaining those core systematic review methods, we're not talking about a rapid review or some, some difference in the methods. We use the term continual. So that there's obviously some uh, scope there for thinking about how frequently that needs to be. So some people are thinking that that means rerunning searches every three, four months. For others, you know, it could be almost every day that searches are rerunning. Um, this idea of updating the review and where that needs to happen. So it could be in a journal, it could be on a website. And this idea of incorporating new evidence and there are some questions about how that actually happens. Do we need to um, do that by republishing the full review or can we, um, can we do that in some other way? Just to point out that there are others um, who are working in the systematic review area um, who are doing, um, sorry, I'm just fiddling with the uh, webinar uh, boxes. Um, so there are others who are doing living systematic reviews. There is a team, um, Perrine Krecki and Philippe Riveau, who've coined the term a live cumulative network meta-analysis in which they suggest that it is a single review that encompasses the whole randomised evidence for all available treatments in a condition and it's continuously updated. There's another team, Stephen Simpson and Robert Badgett, who have used the term a living meta-analysis and they take a more, um, a slightly different idea, which is almost like a wiki review where the data are maintained publicly and other people are actually invited to make use of it and to actually add to it themselves and sort of a more of a citizen science or um, a real crowd approach to, um, to producing uh, a living review. So in terms of the key differences between a living systematic review and a systematic review, we can think about those in four main areas around how the review is produced and published. So um, with a living systematic review, the work processes are different. So instead of having uh, the searches rerun perhaps every few years, we're talking about maintaining the searches and having them run often as auto alerts and that that feeds into a continuous loop of screening, data extraction, risk of bias, data synthesis and then incorporation into the review. So that obviously has big implications for the author teams. So instead of a big effort every few years, we're talking about perhaps a small continuous effort that, that, it got, that goes over time. As I mentioned, we're not thinking that the methods themselves are vastly different, but there are a couple of additional components to the review methods that need to be thought about and planned in advance. So the specific approach that you'll take to searching and study incorporation is pre-specified, and that some of you might be aware that there, there can be an issue with regards to false positives with frequently updating meta-analyses, and so there may need to be some statistical adjustments to allow for the, the adding of new studies potentially quite frequently to the same meta-analysis. Publication of living systematic reviews is quite tricky. So I've obviously it needs to be an online only um, format, whether that's journals or websites. And the idea that the manuscript itself is dynamic and that, that it can be updated and changed over time. So Cochrane's actually very well placed to be publishing living systematic reviews because we already publish updates, but a lot of other journal publishers don't have that model. So um, it's quite a big shift in thinking about how we actually get these things published. So the features of a Cochrane LSR approach, just some broad, um, some of the broad concepts are that a new review or an update can be a living review, that in theory any type of review can be um, an LSR, so it's not just intervention reviews with RCTs, 
that the core methods remain the same. There are some additional LSR specific methods. They must go in the protocol. And it, it's just interesting to think about the fact that with our model, we're talking about continual evidence surveillance or searching, but it's not necessary that the actual review is republished at the same frequency of the searching. So we are communicating with alerts to the readers on an ongoing basis what's happening with the living review, but not necessarily republishing and communicating what's new every time we, uh, we rerun the searches.